Hi guys, I'm back today with another tutorial about Squarespace and this time I want to talk about the shape block. Now shape block has been around for a few months, but I wanted to record this tutorial just to show you how you can use it. If you still haven't discovered it or if you haven't had a chance to play around with it, I want to show you the options that you have available and a couple of creative uses for how you can use it on your website. So I'm here on a demo. A blank website and I have a blank section where I'm going to show you how to work with the shape block. So again, this is something that is available for Squarespace 7.1 and more specifically for the Fluid Engine Editor. So I'm going to click Add Block and then you can either search for it by typing in shape or you can just scroll down simply on the right hand side, click on the shape block and that'll immediately add a rectangle shape. Now as you add the, the shape block to your page, there's only a few options here. You can edit the shape or you can duplicate it to reuse it on other parts of your site or page. So I'm going to click edit and this is where we have all the options for controlling how the shape looks, appears and what it does. So first of all, there are several options to choose from. You have your standard square, rectangle shape, then circle, triangle, diamonds, and you know, all other cool shapes that you can add to your website. And what's interesting is that once you selected your shape, if you click, if you have this stretch option toggled on, which will, it will be by default, then you'll notice that the shape, let me change the color of the shape so that you can see better. The shape will fill out the entire container that it is in. So if you want, and as you resize that container, it'll adjust to fill that container and to be the shape that matches the container width and length. If you don't want this option, and if you want the shape to maintain its original shape or aspect ratio rather, then uncheck this option and this will give you the shape that you're looking for. Now, immediately below you have the option for rounded corners so if you select if you select this first option then any number that you type in here such as i don't know 150 it'll round out all the corners but if you select the second option then you can control each corner separately if you select this one and let's change this value to 50 and then let's do the opposite here to 50 as well. And as you can see, this now gives you different corners for each or different roundness for each corner of the shape. You can also undo this by simply typing in zero for each value, but do know that you can create some more custom looking shapes simply by playing around with the values for the rounded corners. Then for styling, as you might have guessed, we have the color option, which allows you to choose any of the five colors that are in your palette, or you can go with the custom color and choose something completely different or enter your own custom code if you want to use another color from your palette that isn't currently on your site. And then finally, we have the option for drop shadow, which allows you to add a shadow behind the shape. And let me change the color yet again so that you can see better. You can change the angle, which essentially controls where the, let me make the shade, the shadow bigger, but essentially the angle controls where the shadow is positioned. Okay. So by playing around with that, you can control where the shadow actually falls. You can control the distance, which is essentially the distance from the original shape. You can make it uh, smaller, which will make the shadow appear smaller, or you can make it bigger, which will make the shadow appear bigger. And then you can play around with the blur, which essentially just makes it more blurry, which gives it this kind of like a soft glow behind the shape, or you can remove the blur completely, which essentially gives the uh, illusion that there is another shape behind it, which can be used to create a layered effect if that is something you're going for. And then of course you can control the color for the shadow itself. Then let me show you a few different things that you can actually do with this shape block. So first of all, you can add 
like another layer behind the image to make it appear like the image itself has a drop shadow, which currently is not an option with the shadows here. But with the addition of the shape block, you can create this sort of illusion or you can create this layered collage type effect here. You can also position the shapes behind the text. So as you can see here, I have added a simple shape behind this text and then by overlaying it over the image here, I have this cool looking effect like what we used to have in Squarespace with the image blocks from before. Another thing that you can do is you can play around with the placement of the shadow block and the text block layouts with images and shadow and not shadows, but shapes and text like this. And this is simply the text, uh, but you can also use below to indicate, to give a visual cue that this is the section for reviews or testimonials. You can also just add it as a decoration here over images, or you can add it uh, next to that. You can do, for example, we can put it right here. I don't want to make it bigger. I just want to here. You can add it if you so desire on um, in the section, for example, image blocks like this and two image blocks right here where the shapes are about adding all the images, or if you simply just want to customize more than what's available in the pre-made sections offers. Of course, those are just some examples. Use a shape block to spice up your website, but I hope this video gives you an idea of how you can use them and different ways you can apply them to your site. That's it for today and I'll be back shortly with another video.